Okay, this is chapter six from the book Best Christian Art by me, Peter Rogers. Um, so the first painting here is called The Baptism of Christ by St. John the Baptist. The painting is by Jean Restout, you know, French guy, 1720. And it's a beautiful painting. Again, they have fantastic use of the light. And there were some really great French artists, Jean Restout, Jean-Louis Jerome, and um, Champagne. And there's one other guy too. Anyways, Restout it just has a great way he uses the light to sort of focus the event. And you see, you know, coming from heaven, the Holy Spirit. There's Jesu Christu. It's just beautiful. And, um, you know, John the Baptist had talked about, make straight the path for he who comes. I'm just a voice crying out in the wilderness. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Every valley shall be exalted. And the song that that best reminds me of is from Handel's Messiah, where the song is called, Every Valley Will Be Exalted. Okay. And John was clothed in camel's hair with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and honey. So that's a good one there. All right, now here is a painting called The Wedding of Cana by Paolo Veronese. And um, it's a beautiful painting from 1563. This was one of the first miracles that Christ uh, performed that led people to believe in him, where he converted the old wine, so to speak, to the new wine. And there's Christ seated at the center of the table. Very colorful, animated film with the dogs and everything else. You know, the art artist has just shown off how great his talent is. It's, it's awesome. It's beautiful. Okay, here's a, one I really like. This one's a Russian artist, and I kind of make the point again. There were a lot of really good Russian artists in the 1800s. There were a lot of good artists, um, you know, all through Europe in the 1800s. Uh, so this one is by Alexander Ivanov in 1857, and it's the appearance of Jesus before the people, right at the moment before John the Baptist sees uh, Jesus, right at the moment where John the Baptist. So here's John the Baptist. He sees Jesus Christu uh, walking over to the crowd while they're doing the baptisms. And it's beautiful. I looked at like probably about a thousand paintings for everyone that was considered good enough to be in this book. Okay, here's Carl Bloch. Carl Bloch um, painted this in 1850, and he did a whole series of illustrations about the life of Christ. Gustave Doré also had illustrated the life of Christ and the Bible. So this is part of Jesus being tempted by the devil, you know. Tried to tempt him with wealth, tempt him with food. Okay, and that was right after he'd been baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. Then he um, went into the wilderness where, for 40 days where he's tempted by Satan. And here's another painting of, you know, the same series of events. This one, The Temptations of Christ by Sandro Botticelli in 1482. And that, you know, Christ said, man does not live by bread alone. And that when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, this is what the devil said, command that these stones be made bread. But Jesus answered, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear him up. And Jesus said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And then the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things I will give to thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. So that's the temptation story of Christ. Here's uh, now Christ goes after that to recruit the apostles. He said, come with me and be a fisher of men to the fishermen, like Andrew, his brother Peter, Simon Peter. And um, it's a very nice painting by Edward Armitage from 1890. Okay, now here is a painting by Raphael called The Miraculous Drought of the Fishes. You know, in one case, Peter had fished all day and night, and he couldn't catch almost anything. Then Christ said, throw the net out on the other side, and he had a big catch. So a rather spectacular painting here by Raphael. This one's from 1515. Again, Raphael was commissioned by Pope Julius to make uh, many wonderful paintings, the best of which was the School of Athens in the Vatican. 
Okay. Um, there's also a real nice tapestry uh, named after this. My program just sometimes decides to save itself right in the middle. It slows me down. Okay. So Jesus, when he recruited his apostles, he recruited guys that they weren't a bunch of scholars. Other than later with St. Paul, these guys were not a bunch of scholars. Okay. All right, now here is the calling of Matthew. Matthew was the tax collector. And so what's, what's nice about this painting is it makes the point that, you know, Christ didn't just go around picking the best religious scholars. He picked people who he thought were going to work with him and people who society often would despise. You know, uh, tax collectors were the scum of the environment. That's a painting by Caravaggio from 1600 there. It's incredible, the quality of painting by Caravaggio. Okay, here's an, another painting of Christ calling his apostles. This one is by Domenico Ghirlandaio in 1481. He's also one of the teachers of Michelangelo. Uh, some good songs that relate to this painting here include I'm a Disciple of Christ, sung by Benjamin Josiah at YouTube channel Strive to Be. they got some other good songs in there at Strive to Be as well. Uh, oh, you know, it's a good one too. They have that one, I Will Serve the Lord by Kennedy Anderson. That's a real good song. Um, I really like the song uh, Jesu Cristo, Yo Estoy Aquí by Roberto Carlos. That's a really good one too. It's in Spanish. It's great. Jesus es mi pastor is also a good one in Spanish. Okay, more paintings of Jesus Christu with his apostles. He brought the apostles um, to this uh, hill, and he's now um, ordaining them, so to speak. They didn't go to any school. They just talked to God. This one's by, in 1890 by James Tissett. So some songs that remind me of this are Surrender, Hillsong Worship. That's a great song, Surrender by Hillsong Worship. Lead Me to the Cross by Hilk Song. Okay, now here's the Kennedy Anderson song I was referring to earlier, I Will Serve the Lord. There's a great version of that in Portuguese called I Will Serve the Lord by Fernando Oliver. Um, hey, Jesus All for Jesus by Rob Marks, really good. He's an Irish singer. The only thing as good as Christian painting is Christian music. Man, they're both just awesome. I think Christian music is the best music in the world, and Christian painting is the best painting in the world. There's nothing even close. Uh, Christ Walking on Water by Amadi Varent uh, from 1850, Public Domain. And my favorite song to go with this would be Oceans uh, by Hillsong. You will lead me out in the water where my feet may fail. It's, it's a great song. Okay, I Will Praise You in the Storm by Casting Crowds. It's also a great song. Not even good. It's great. Um, Soy una gota en tu inmenso mar. I'm just a drop in your um, immense sea. It's a very nice song in Spanish. Okay, this painting is uh, by James Tissett, and there's Christ walking on the water. And I would again tell you, all you got to do is hit the print screen button, and you could save a copy of any of these paintings. So if you want to make your own slideshow or just have them available in case you want to refer back to them later, you know, I've been interested in art for many, many years, and uh, it's just nice. A lot of times it's fun, like, um, you know, to share these paintings with other people, and they, they sort of capture an important story or a metaphor quite often. They're just nice. Okay, again, here's Christ walking on water, this time with St. Peter, and St. Peter was doing okay until his faith weakened, and then he sort of fell. Here's a painting of Christ uh, where he gives his charge to Peter. Well, first of all, he had asked them, who do you think I am? Jesus points to the sheep and to Peter, indicating that Peter shall be a shepherd to the sheep. And he says to the disciples, Who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, Blessed art thou, Simon Peter, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my Father who art in heaven. And I say this unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Okay, so... Um, that was an important point. You know, St. Peter, you know, he wimped out on a few times where he denied Christ three times, but he also did a lot of good stuff. Um, Peter means rock, you know, like the story of the rock. Okay, here's Christ Healing the Blind Man, 1871, painting by Carl Bloke. All right, and again, the song that goes with that, of course, is Amazing Grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Uh, Judy Collins is the best female version of singing Amazing Grace. Uh, Paul Robeson is the best male singer of Amazing Grace. The best instrumental is by the Scottish Dragoons with their bagpipes. Those are all awesome versions of Amazing Grace. Here's 
Here's a painting, Christ Healing the Sick by Gebhard Fugel, 1885. And Christ went around healing people. If you notice, you look at what did Christ do? He didn't hurt anybody. He didn't kill anybody. He just went around healing people, saving people. Okay, that's a nice God. Like we are talking about, the Romans didn't have any gods that were like that nice, okay? Whereas Christ just went around doing good things and nice things. Okay, here's the healing of a lame man by Raphael from 1515. Um, like I was saying, Jesus didn't kill anybody. He just went around saving people and being nice to people. Here's more Christ healing. This one's by Bartolome Murillo. We talked about him earlier. He does a fantastic job of painting faces. They're lifelike an individual. Okay, songs that go with the Christ going around healing people. One is called The Waymaker. I think that's by Chris Leland is the best version of that. It's fantastic. There's a real nice version in Spanish, too. Excuse me. Abres Camino Milagroso is a really nice one. It's Su Presencia uh, YouTube channel. Um, I really like the song Jesus by Ann Wilson. She's she's a young singer. She's really good. Um, Jesus is My Healer by Jesse Harris. That's actually a pretty good song, too. Oh, Jesus Christ, You Are My Living Hope by Abigail Ginsterblum. That's a good song, too. It's all really good stuff. Okay, here's a painting of Christ and the young ruler who asked, how could I, you know, be like you or follow you? And Christ said, you know, sell your possessions and come follow me. The young guy is a pretty wealthy guy. I didn't want to hear that. Anyways, the song is Lead Me to the Cross. is a great song. Again, Surrender. I surrender like I surrender my life to Christ. That's a great song. That's got like hundreds and hundreds of millions of views. It's, it's a fantastic song. When I first heard it, I played it over again like, 20, 30, 40, 50 times in the first month that I heard it. I loved it. It is well with my soul. I think it's Christine DeMarco or something who sings that. She's got a great version of that. She's with Hillsong or Bethel. Hillsong and Bethel have lots and lots of modern great songs. Okay, here is the woman who was caught. Oh, no, this is a different woman. This is the woman who touched the hem of Christ oh, so that she could be healed. And there's a pretty good song about that called The Hem of His Garment sung by Sam Cooke. Okay, this is by Jean Drouet. Okay, real nice. And it's from uh, 1784. Okay, here's Christ with the woman at the well. This one's by Carl Bloke, 1890. Um, and she had slept with five men out of wedlock, apparently. So she would be considered quite promiscuous by the standards of that day. Uh, here's Christ with the woman taken in adultery. And she was going to be stoned to death, and he protected her. Here's another version of the painting of the woman taking adultery. This one by Corbold, that previous one by Lorenzo Lotto. And here's another one. I like this one. Uh, this is by Emile Signol. And Christ said, Let him who is without sin cast the first stone, and none did. Who are you? And she said, I am Mary Magdalene. And Christ said, No man now speaks against you, nor do I. Go and sin no more. Notice that he didn't tell her, go and commit adultery more. He said, go and sin no more. But he had mercy on her, and he spared her, and he saved her life. And he taught the people to forgive. Okay, And, she, and then here's the penitent Mary Magdalene. Uh, this one by Murillo again. You know, a very nice face. Not his best one, but still good. This is uh, Jesus eating dinner at the house of the Pharisee. And Mary Magdalene came in, and she washed his feet, and she anointed him. This is paintings by Peter Paul Rubens in 1640. And then Simon the Pharisee, uh, he had invited Jesus to dine with him. And then it says, A prostitute woman in the town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she brought an alabaster jar of perfume, and she kneeled at the feet of Jesus, crying. She began to wash his feet with her tears, and she dried them with her hair, kissing them many times and rubbing them with perfume. When the Pharisee saw this, he thought to himself, if Jesus was a prophet, he would know that this woman was a prostitute. Jesus said to the Pharisee, I have something to tell you. Two people owed money to the same banker. One owed 500 coins and the other owed 50. They had no money to pay, but the banker told both of them that they did not need to pay him. Which person would love the banker more? And the Pharisee said, I think it would be the one who owed him more money. And Jesus said, yes, you are right. Then Jesus turned toward the woman and said to the Pharisee, Do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet, 
but she has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss of greeting, but she has kissed my feet since I came in. You did not put oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. I tell you, she has shown such great love that her many sins are forgiven. But the person who is forgiven only a little, a little will love only a little. Then Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven. The people sitting at the table began to say amongst themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Then Jesus said to the woman, Because you have believed, you are saved from your sins. Now go in peace. Okay, that's the gospel according to Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50. Okay, so here's, a, here's, I think, an even better painting. It's beautiful. This one is by Philippe de Champagne. So he's another one of these great French artists that just captures the lighting and the scene. He's got other paintings that are even better than this, technically, but it's, you know, it's a masterpiece. Okay, it's just great. And I never understood prostitution when I was going to say to myself, it's like, you know, people say, oh, gee, you know, a prostitute or a... Uh, only fans or porn woman can make so much money, you know, 20000 in a month or something. But it's like, <clears throat> get married. A husband gives you money every day for life. It's a much better deal, and you don't destroy yourself. Mary Magdalene at the Foot of the Cross by Francisco Paolo Hayes, 1870, Public Domain. Okay, so Mary Magdalene, they, had, they used to have Mary Magdalene houses where women who had been prostitutes or suffered for other reasons could go to kind of like get their life back together. So the Christian charities are pretty good, and they're they're for real. <laughs> they're honest. They're not like fake things, you know, that you know claim one thing and do something else. Like DCSF, you know, claims to protect children, but I had heard that it was involved in trafficking them. Mary Magdalene, a reformed prostitute, was a great example of somebody who turned her life around. Christ asks. Christ helps all who ask. Anyone can turn their life around. Anyone could be a Christmas Christian whereas PC has zero tolerance for anybody who disagrees with them. Christianity is a lot nicer. Christianity degrees, disagrees with much, but it gives everyone a chance to redeem themselves, however late the hour. Another painting of the penitent Mary Magdalene, this one by Gerard Sagers from 1630. Okay, here's another penitent Mary Magdalene, and this is by Tintoretto. And um, yellow was a color that prostitutes were required to wear in Renaissance Italy. So there's sort of like a hint of yellow about her. Beautiful painting there. He often has kind of dark lighting, kind of reminds me of Kiro Oscuro. Okay, here is um, Raising of the Daughter of Jairus by Ilya Repin, another Russian artist, 1874. And again, it's beautiful. Christ going around saving people like he so often does. And then here is the raising of Lazarus. Okay, Lazarus coming out of the tomb by Jean Juvenet, another great French painter from 1706. Lazarus from Bethany with his sisters Martha and Mary of Bethany. Here's a magnificent sculptor of Jesus. Look how great this is. This is by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. And he was kind of like what Michelangelo was of the 1500s as the greatest sculptor in the world. Uh, Bernini was to the 1600s. I mean, just look at that. It's magnificent. <laughs> and he had a lot of other magnificent sculptures. And he has got a lot of sculptures that decorate the Vatican and the roof of the Vatican um, and the St. Peter's Basilica. They're beautiful. Okay, here is the Prodigal Son with Pigs. This is by Bartolome Murillo from 1665. So the Prodigal Son had left his father's farm where he had a good life and he squandered the father's uh, money that he had given to him, his inheritance, and he kind of realized his folly and then he tried to go back to his father and the father accepted him. The older brother was a little bit jealous. He's like, I've always been good and I never run away and acted like a jerk and wasted family money, yet you favor him over me. And the father was like, he once was lost, but now he's found. Let us just celebrate. So anyways, Return of the Prodigal Son by Bartolome Maria. It's one of my favorite paintings of that event. Um, oh, by the way, I didn't have it written in here, but there's a great song. The best song about the Prodigal Son is called The Prodigal Son by Keith Green. Oh, here it is. I should have put that in blue. I usually put the songs in blue. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a great song. So it's, it's a long song, too. It's like eight minutes or something at least. It's really good. Okay, here is uh, Jesu Christu preaching. I guess it's just the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah, the Beatitudes. This one by James Tissot. Okay. 
James Tissot painted all the Life of Christ paintings. Okay, Sermon on the Mount by Henrik Ulrich, 1890, public domain. So that's a real nice one. And um, here is just all these songs that go with it. There's so many great songs that go with uh, Christ, Christ preaching and his kind deeds. In Christ Alone by Christian Stanfield, that's an awesome song. Again, I, every one of these songs, I love them. I listen to them like a hundred times. Jesus, Only Jesus by the Irish singer Robin Marks, fantastic. Nearer to God. Uh, John McCormick has a very nice old opera Irish version of it. Uh, Sam Cooke and the Soul Stirrers really have a lively version of it, the most lively version of it that's great. Here's Waymaker by Chris Leland. My Jesus uh, by Ann Wilson, great stuff. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing is a beautiful sad song by Chris Rice. Uh, the Christ is the font of every blessing. Be Thou My Vision by Nathan Pacheco. And Be Thou My Vision is related to St. Saint Saint Peter but it was also related to Christ, not St. Peter, to St. Patrick in Ireland. Nathan Pacheco has a great version of that on the internet, on YouTube. Uh, Jaime Jacua, uh, Ante Tu Presencia, O Señor Jesus Ungame. Uh, that's a good song. He's the guy, same guy who so, uh, Soy Una Gota and Tu Inmenso Mar. The McClure's High King of Heaven, great stuff. I Speak Jesus, Charity Gale is great stuff. Fighting for Me, Riley Clemens is great. 10,000 Reasons by Matt Redman, great all these things, if you, if you like Christian music at all, you're going to love all these songs, uh, almost all of them. Yet is good. It's a newer song, not as good as the other ones, but it's still good. Talking to Jesus, Mama Was Right, Elevation Wars Up, good stuff. What a Beautiful Name It Is by Hillsong or Ann Wilson. I actually like Ann Wilson's version better on that. Sing Hallelujah to the Lord by this Filipino lady. Um, that's actually one of my all-time favorites. I listen to that song hundreds of times. It's just beautiful. You want to talk about a meditation song, that's the equivalent right there. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Uh, Filipino lady is on their Sunday worship. Uh, if, you, if you look around, you'll find it. I, I have links to it in one of my videos about Christian music. All My Hope is in Jesus by Crowder's Good Stuff. We Are No Longer Slaves or Children of God. Melissa Hessler, Good Stuff. I Went Down to the River and Pray the Old Fashioned Way. Alison Krauss, Great Song. King of My Heart by Sarah McMillan, Great Song. I Saw the Light, Hank Williams Sr., great stuff. Precious Lord, Take My Hand, Hank Sr. And look, I got page after page of them. I'm not even going to say these all out loud. There's so many of them, a whole page of them. And I have entire videos about this Christian music. It's awesome. It's great. I've listened to, I've listened to, I've, it's a long story, but I have listened to thousands. You can't even imagine how many Christian songs I've listened to. For many, many years, I've listened to this stuff over and over again. I love it. Okay, so I won't read those all out, but they're there if you want to see them there. And I have a whole bunch of other videos linking to all this Christian music. Okay, Christ's Sermon on the Mount. This time the paintings by Carl Bloke from 1877. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And this is what I mean by Christianity is the friend of the little guy. It basically tells the little guy that you shall be re rewarded for your goodness in life. <laughs> the meek peoples you inherit the earth. I mean, you want to talk about a religion that supports the little guy. This is it, as big as it could be. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I went to Sunday school when I was a kid, and I remember singing that song. It was great. You are the light of the world. It's a very nice song. And Christians, I think, are the light of the world. You drive around in, 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 in the wintertime, okay? And it's cold, and there's nothing going on. The secular name for the winter holiday is called Winter Holiday. I mean, how boring is that? Whereas uh, Christmas, everything is all lit up. There's all these beautiful lights. All the families get together. All the long-distance boyfriends and girlfriends get together. It's a beautiful thing. And so it brings light into an otherwise bleak and cold winter. It's the best holiday of the year. Okay, here's The Sacred Heart of Jesus by Pompeo Batoni um, from 1767. My mom had this painting on the wall of our house. Okay, and then a whole bunch of other great songs that go with it. Okay. So they're all there, and I got a whole bunch of them in Spanish too. Now here's a nice painting, The Valley of Tears by Gustave Doré from 1883, public domain. And basically he's leading, leading them out of their misery. Christianity brings a lot of joy to people, and it's also a way to turn your life around when your life is messed up. Like Alcoholics Anonymous, they're much more successful if they become Christians again. They need something to replace the role that alcohol had in their life, so replace it with something positive that can turn their life around. 
And so it helps people to come out of the dumps to, you know, find meaning in their life and a purpose and a perspective that they can work with to live and be happy. So here's Christ the Consolator, okay, and this one by Carl Bloke, and again, lots of great songs there. Um, Christ the Consolator, this one by Ari Sheffer. Okay, and then here's a nice painting, The Hope of the World, and I think it's true. The only thing that can make everybody get along in this world, in my opinion, is Christian values. Not necessarily being Christians, but having Christian values. That man are created in the image of God, therefore the individual is important, that he's more important than money, and we have to do right by him. And I think that if you've got other cultures, like I said, you know, a lot of the super nice people from India with the Hindu as their religion, a lot of super nice people from Japan with Shinto as their religion, and those things work well for monocultures. They can... They can function as a society and they've proven that with their monocultures but i think if you have a real complex mixed society the only thing that could hold it together peacefully long term is christian values i'm not saying everybody has to be a christian but i am saying is i do think the bible should be taught in school i do think they should be taught the message of christ that you know love one another forgive one another that what you do to the least of my brethren so if people don't bully you know people who are weak you do unto me all of that leads to a society where everybody's nice to each other, can get along, and everybody's accepted in Christianity. You don't, there's not like exclusionary rules who can be it or not. Anybody can say, I'm, I want to be a Christian. I love Christ. Okay, So it welcomes everyone. And so it's the hope of the world for peace. Because if we don't take this as peace, what's going to happen is all the billionaires who run everything, they're going to say, look, we own you, and you must obey. And if you don't like it, tough beans. Okay, Those are really the two alternatives. And if you think there's more alternatives, I think you haven't read much history. Uh, and unfortunately, the billionaires deciding that we're farm animals have more power now than we do. But anyways, continuing on, Christ on a Donkey, Entering into Jerusalem by Jean-Léon Jerome, 1897, Palm Sunday. Okay, here it is. They all got the palms out. Uh, his entry into Jerusalem on a Donkey by Hippolyta Flandron from 1824. Oh, here's uh, Christ in the Temple, Casting Out the Money Changers by Carl Bloke, 1880. Uh, you can look it up in the Gospel according to Mark right there. And he didn't hurt anybody. He just said, hey, don't do that in front of the temple. Christ driving out the money changers. This one by El Greco from 1570. And now we get to the Last Supper. So here's the painting by, of the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci from 1498. It's public domain. And the reason I show you this is it's a nice painting, but it's no big deal. I don't think anybody would want this in their dorm room on the wall. Michelangelo is like a hundred times better artist than Leonardo da Vinci. I think Leonardo gets, da Vinci gets, paint, gets uh, promoted a hundred times more than Michelangelo, even though Michelangelo is a hundred times better because he was like a known homosexual. And, you know, that's popular in uh, PC culture with gaslighting and everything. But his skill as an artist, I mean, he could draw pretty well. But look, his paintings are nothing special, okay? And this is like his best painting, and it's no big deal at all. So... You know, it's nice. I'm just saying is, you know, if you know art, Michelangelo's 100 times better. <laughs> Michelangelo's the greatest artist who ever lived. Da Vinci, you know, he, he wouldn't even probably be famous if he hadn't lived around the time of the Renaissance. He just wasn't that good of a painter. Okay, Last Supper by Carl Bloke from 1850. And here we have another version of The Last Supper. I kind of like this one. It's by Juan de Juanes from 1562. What I like about it is there's the Holy Grail right there. And there's the idea that the Holy Grail was used when Christ was crucified and they put a spear in his side, Longinus, the Roman soldier, that uh, then uh, someone else caught the blood of Christ in the Holy Grail. And that has the ability to heal anything. And that's the story of the Holy Grail. And then there was King Arthur in the whole quest with his Knights of the Round Table to find the Holy Grail. So there's the Holy Grail right there from the Last Supper of, of Jesu Christo. Okay, so that concludes Chapter 6, uh, The Ministry Years of Christ. The next um, lecture from this book will be The Passion of Christ. So anyways, hope you enjoyed that.